So everyone, in this video, we're going to guide you through the key muscles of the knee joint. We're going to look at muscles such as the quadriceps, as well as key muscles like the hamstrings, as well as other muscles that assist in the movement of this joint. If you're ready to learn anatomy, let's dive in. Hey everyone, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. Let's dive into the anatomy of the knee joint. And we're going to start with the quadriceps muscles. So first of all, when we think about the quadriceps, we're actually going to look at them more globally, in particular to look out where they insert distally. So for simplicity, the quadriceps essentially all run from around the anterior hip and the pelvis and then join together distally to a central common tendon, which is the quadriceps tendon. The quadriceps tendon is suggested to insert into the more superior aspect of the patella and is suggested to blend into the next structure, the patella tendon, which originates from the more inferior half of the patella. So from the patella tendon, we get the insertion point into the tuberosity of the tibia, the tibial tuberosity. So the key thing to remember when it comes to all four quadriceps muscles is that they insert into the quadriceps tendon which then blends in with the patella tendon, which inserts into the tibial tuberosity of the tibia. So you may well hear that these muscles all insert into the quadriceps tendon or the tibial tuberosity, and now you understand why. So now let's look at these muscles in more detail. The quadriceps are made up of four key muscles. We have vastus lateralis, vastus intermedius, vastus medialis, and the biggest over the top, rectus femoris. So let's start with vastus lateralis, which we can clearly see on the more lateral side of the anterior thigh. The origin of this muscle comes from the superior half of the anterior and lateral surfaces of the femur before it goes on to insert into the quadriceps tendon and thus the tibial tuberosity, as we said before. We then have vastus intermedius in the middle. This muscle originates also from the superior half of the anterior and lateral surfaces of the femur before, like the others, joining into the quadriceps tendon and thus the tibial tuberosity. Vastus medialis, as you can imagine, is on the more medial side of the knee, as the phrase suggests. The origin of this muscle is from the more anterior and medial surfaces of the femur before also joining into the quadriceps tendon and the tibial tuberosity. And finally, the biggest of the four, rectus femoris. Now this muscle has two heads. It has a straight head and a reflected head. The straight head originates from the AIIS, the anterior inferior iliac spine, not to be confused with the anterior superior iliac spine, which sits a little bit more superiorly, as you can imagine. So that's the straight head, and we can just see the reflected head over here, which originates from a small groove just superior to the acetabulum, referred to as the supraacetabular groove. And of course, this muscle runs straight down the middle of the thigh before inserting into the quadriceps tendon and thus the tibial tuberosity. So the key thing about all of the quadriceps muscles is that they extend the knee. That is their focal chief job as a movement provider. When we think about rectus femoris, it originates just superiorly to the hip joint and therefore it has a weaker role in hip flexion. But the key thing to think about when we think of them all as a four, knee extension. So now let's swap over to the posterior side of the thigh and the chief muscles in this region are the hamstring muscles. Now we have three of these. We have from medial to lateral, semimembranosis, and I like to remember that mem is the most medial, semitendinosis, and biceps femoris. Now, the term biceps would suggest that this muscle has two heads, and indeed it does. As we can see here, we have a long head and a short head. The short head, naturally the shorter of the two, originates from a little bit deeper than the long head, and we can see how this muscle originates from the lateral lip of the linear aspera of the femur. 
However, the long head of the biceps femoris, as well as semimembranosus and semitendinosus, originate from the ischial tuberosity. This is our sitting bone, so when you're sitting down and you palpate on your buttock, the hard bony prominence you can feel there is the ischial tuberosity. And so when patients have a proximal hamstring tendinopathy, you'll commonly see them reaching for and pointing to that area, the ischial tuberosity, as the place that they experience their pain. Now, the hamstring muscles insert into slightly different areas. The semimembranosus inserts into the posterior aspect of the medial tibial condyle. The semitendinosus inserts into the pezanserine region, which is on the superior and slightly medial aspect of the tibial shaft. And the biceps femoris muscle has those two heads, the long head and the short head, and both of them join together to insert into the fibular head. So basically, semimembranosus and semitendinos insert medially, but the biceps femoris inserts laterally. Now, the key thing about the hamstring muscles is that their key role is knee flexion when we think about the knee. However, when we think about their origin of the ischial tuberosity, which sits just around the hip joint, we can remember that they also have a key role at the hip, which is in hip extension. But when it comes to the knee, the hamstring muscles are the knee flexors. So finally, let's talk through a couple of muscles that have secondary roles at the knee joint, but as a result are really important to mention. So the first two are the sartorius muscle and the gracilis muscle we can see that both of these run along the medial aspect of the thigh and both of them have a role in knee flexion. The sartorius is a weak knee flexor, but as it originates from the ASIS, we can also imagine that it has a weaker role in hip flexion. Whereas the gracilis muscle also is a weak knee flexor, but as we can see from its more medial position around the hip, we can also remember that it has a role in hip adduction. So the eagle-eyed of you will notice that the gracilis and the sartorius muscle also insert into the pezanserine region here at the supero-medial tibial shaft. And the other muscle which inserts into this region, which we mentioned earlier, was the semitendinosus muscle. So that's a really key thing when you're thinking about patients who have pain around this supero-medial aspect of the tibia. Could it be that they have a pezanserine bursitis where these three tendons, sartorius, gracilis, and semitendinosus, may irritate the bursa that sits underneath it, which is, of course, the pezanserine bursa. So the next muscle to highlight is the gastrocnemius muscle. Now, of course, you will remember that this muscle is a chief plantar flexor at the ankle with its insertion into the Achilles tendon. However, it does have a role at the knee as it also acts as a weak knee flexor. Now, the way that we can remember this is that this muscle has two heads. It has a medial head, which originates from the posterior medial femoral condyle, and a lateral head that originates from the posterior lateral femoral condyle. So as a result, the fact that it has these two heads, which originate from just superiorly to the knee joint, helps us remember that it indeed has that role in knee flexion. And the final muscle to mention, which is really important and really specific to the knee joint, is the popliteus muscle. This muscle sits deep to the gastrocnemius and it has a really interesting shape and direction that in which it runs, as you can see here. So it originates from the lateral femoral condyle before running medially and posteriorly round the back of the knee joint before inserting into the proximal posterior surface of the tibia. So the key role of the popliteus comes in the locking and unlocking mechanism of the knee by rotating the femur and the tibia, which we can remember from the fact that it originates and inserts into both of those bones in order to control the position of the knee. This is really important to fully allow our knee to lock into place when it is in a closed pack position of knee extension to maintain stability. 
So everyone, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please support us by smashing that like button. It's the number one way that you can help us with our Clinical Physio YouTube channel. If you want more resources from us, please be sure to check out our Instagram account, at Clinical Physio. Make sure you give us a follow there if you want even more resources for physiotherapists. And if you want more specifically on knee anatomy, check out our membership website, member.clinicalphysio.com. On membership, you can get access to the Knee Anatomy Bootcamp for all the best anatomy teaching for the knee. And of course, you'll get access to other anatomy bootcamps like the Shoulder Anatomy Bootcamp, the Foot and Ankle Anatomy Bootcamp, the Wrist and Hand Anatomy Bootcamp, and more to help with your anatomy learning. My name's Khaled. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.